Hello there, welcome to the video. I'm going to be doing a review of these primary colors that I bought from Daniel Smith. These arrived in the mail a couple of days ago and they came as a set. So you get three perylene red, Hansi yellow medium and French ultramarine. So these are a fantastic sort of set for beginners. I've been talking about this uh, these set for, for a little while and linking to them. So you can have a look at them in the description if you're interested in buying them. But uh, look, I got these because they just come cheaper if you buy them uh, in the three set rather than buy them uh, one individually. And uh, they are also really good colors to, to start off with. I use them really often in all my paintings. Primaries, as I say, are pretty much the only colors that you need. So let's take a look at what's included. So of course you get your three paints, 15 mils each, which will last you quite some time. They actually come with a little sheet here, basically, which tell you a little bit, uh, a little bit about the, what's included in the set. So you should be able to see here. It gives you a little rundown on the three colors: so perylene red, medium, uh, staining, and semi-transparent watercolor creates vivid dark washes and uh, a brilliant red orange. So it's a warm red, basically. So uh, it's, a, it's an interesting color, Series 3, and uh, it's quite a vibrant color as well. There's also Hansa Yellow Medium, Series 2, uh, good, excellent light fastness, low staining, does not granulate, so both Perylene Red and Hansa Yellow Medium do not granulate. There's also French Ultramarine here. This is a warm blue, so it's a really lovely color. I use this and also the, the uh, Daniel Smith Normal Ultramarine and it granulates uh, quite quite well. So I think we're gonna have some uh, interesting effects. We're gonna have some fun with these three and I'm gonna go first and do a little swatch. And once we're done, I'm gonna go through and do a demonstration of the painting below, Perylene Red. Let's bring this one down the page and went up the top a fair bit. So that's the darkest that you can essentially get it. And I'm going to just add some water further down the page, more water here. Um, like that. Okay. So that we can get a nice little, nice little mix. Let's so mix and uh, drag that across a little bit more like that bit more water okay fantastic and we'll do the Hansa yellow next just make sure I clean my brush out enough Hansa yellow so that's as bright as you're gonna get it as light as you're gonna get it anyway remove that down the page more water and um, just water down the bottom um, it's actually, it actually has a very similar tone, whether it's, whether you've used only a little bit of it at the bottom or, or, uh, or not. So that's the lightest I can get it. It's mostly water. So interesting. So it's naturally very, very light tone. And we're going to go with the ultramarine blue next. So let's go across the top. I've used this one very often. Uh, a very vivid, vibrant sort of blue. Love the granulation in this as well. Okay, a bit of water down the bottom there. Just lift off a little bit of that paint at the bottom. Okay, do the one at the front in a moment. Okay, just a bit off here at the bottom to show the difference. And sometimes I just like to drop in a bit of water in there to show the bloom effects as well. Okay, so that's uh, that's the the sort of appearance and how they um, react on the paper. I'll give a closer up look. So one thing you'll notice is you do get a fair bit of granulation here in that French ultramarine. The other two appear very smoothly, but they're nice, vivid colours, and I think they're going to be perfect for this painting. So I'm going to go in to the sky, and firstly I'll start off with some yellow. Probably around here, spread that around a bit. I'll actually add in some a little bit of that red through as well, so that it's not too yellowy in there, and a bit more of that yellow. Just a warm area in the sky. 
like this. Uh, move that around there. You know, you might even want to put in a little bit of ultramarine um, on the sides and uh, near the top. Okay, I just want to see how it reacts. Good. There we go. It's almost turned into a slightly purplish colour in here, where it's mixed around with that red. A dull sort of purpley colour. Um, if I mix them together, let's have a look. We can probably get a nice purple running like that here. A bit more blue. There we go. It's a nice kind of purple mix here. And um, as you can see, it's it's a little bit more of a dull purple uh, because it's more of a warmer color. Uh, the red is more of a warm red rather than a cool red. Okay, so we're going to just continue on with the sky. A bit more color here on that left-hand side. It's going to look a bit like a sunset. So, you know, here where we've got a little bit of the light showing through and then the rest of it just having some little bit of color, some cooler color running around the edges. Okay, let's put a bit of red in there, a little bit of blue, like that. There we go, we've got a nice sort of sky mix in here. I can also add in some clouds, so a bit of red, a bit of blue, and do this sort of thing. Mm. There's a lot of, certainly a lot of um, mixing going on in the paper, it's nice. So we get a large cloud shape moving across, maybe a bit in here, in here, you know, something like that. Okay, good. I'm going to mix all three primaries together so to work out some kind of a grayish color. So let's get some equal proportions of all these. Let's have a try there. That's a kind of cooler gray color, but I can deal with that. Yeah, I'm just getting in little bits here of these buildings in the background. Okay, they're just silhouettes. They don't have to be much. Yeah, look at that. And it's, uh, it's nicely sort of blending into the sky bits but it's not spreading too far uh, as you can see with some paints that have too much ox gal in them often you, you run into a bit of trouble if you are too quick with your wet and wet techniques so this is looking quite good it's working well a bit more in here you know see if I can mix myself a green as well for a little bit of these plants, blue and the blue and a bit of this yellow here. Have we got we got a bit of a green color. It's a, you know kind of a dull green color. It's not obvious at all, but I think that's good actually, so that it uh, doesn't stand out, stick out too much. We can make it even lighter by adding some more yellow, like that, and bring it in here. Here, just drag that down because I think this is a grassed off area or something. A bit more blue in here. There. Okay. Something in there. Then, of course, we have a bit of this road which is just yellow and just uh, warm sort of colors in here. So, I'm going to just stick with yellow, a bit of warm color, and drag that all the way through actually on that left hand side as well. Like that. Okay, try not to mix in any of that green, but it might accidentally do that. Put here, put a red here, just some warmth on the ground. And uh, again, you can mix the primaries together to get this sort of general tone. Q, just this general sort of grayish color. Like that, we can use that. There. Good. And for the figures, I want to put in some colors for the figures. I think I'll go with a bit of ultra 
and a bit of the red for this one, more ultra. There. Just going with some pure ultra for this one to the right, like that. There. Let that kind of mix together. There could be one here as well, one here. What else? Let's add in some red on top of some of that. And uh, a bit here. Good. The heads. And we put a bit of indication for the heads. That. Uh, there. There. There we go. So there's a couple of figures standing around. Get the legs in quickly as well. Sort of fade in a bit to the ground. We've also got the cars uh, on the left hand side which need a light wash of colour. I'll put some blue in for these here and join them onto the figures like that. And then what we'll do is get the shadows in running to the right hand side. Before I do that I'll just dry it off actually. So that's all dried off and one thing that you'll notice is the amount of granulation that's present due to the ultramarine, the French ultramarine. So even when I've mixed it here with a bit of the Hansa yellow, you can see it's caused that green to become a more granulating green. Even here where we've got a tiny bit of it, that ultramarine inside that uh, majority Hansa yellow, that's granulated out very, very interestingly compared to just the yellow here, here, here in the sky where there wasn't any ultramarine mixed in at all so that's uh you know that's something to keep in mind that if you have one of your primaries a granulating paint you mix it with a non-granulating then you're going to have a degree of separation there so i actually like that but it's up to you i mean some people do some people don't if you go into the clouds even these clouds here right over there you notice that you also get a bit of granulation still kind of wet so that's the purple that I mixed up with a bit of the French ultra and uh, perline red so you can see it granulating a bit here a bit here as well you notice even in the buildings here some slight granulation there where I tried to mix up a, a gray it's turned out a bit more cooler so it's more like a cooler grayish uh, even a purple kind of color over there these grays over here have a slight granulation but it's just been so light that you can't tell um, in the buildings in the back so interesting i'm gonna put in the remaining shadows and i don't have really much paint left i've got mainly ultra and i'm hoping i can just mix it with the red here uh, oh that's gonna work and i can create a purple like this and maybe a bit of the yellow too, so we can get in some dark bits. And we'll draw in, not draw, but paint in the shadows. So some of them are going directly um, under the car like this, there. So now that could be the wheels there, a bit there. And we're imagining the light source coming from that left hand side, so it might be a bit of shade there on this car on that right side and then the shadow running across on the ground towards this car here um, this car here there's also this it's a kind of a bus or something here that i've drawn in so i can just put in a bit of color there for that the top of that bus and some detail in it but honestly you can't quite tell that it's a bus but it could look, definitely looks like a truck or some kind of shake there in the distance okay i think a bit of darkness here in the back of that car would be better too then of course the little shadows for the figures so i'm going to go and just join up the legs there just a bit of shadow running to that right hand side that's all it takes just a bit like that and on the ground we can start putting in these lines directional lines heading into the scene Ooh, that one's a bit funny um fantastic you know, it's looking fairly, fairly decent actually. Then I can, you know, I've forgotten to actually put this one in earlier, but it's a bit of that tower that I have added there. So, just a tiny bit of colour in there. Gone too far into the sky, so I'm now trying to, to um, blot it out a little bit. And, you know, for the buildings and stuff, you can also just pick up a bit of dry brush 
to add in some features on the buildings. Uh, they are very far away in the distance, so it's hard to tell. But, you know, a few little windows here and that helps. There's birds in the reference photo as well, so I'm going to put in some birds over here. The right hand side too. What am I doing? It's too much. Here. Okay. You know, you do actually also, you also have these uh, sort of poles running down the street uh, with lights and stuff, which is up to you if you want to put these in. I'll add in a, a few little ones like this, but I'm really not going to, not going to overdo it. I think there's enough in here already. Just to imply the basic shape, I'm using the remaining bits and pieces of the paint left over here. So... Uh, I think that's looking pretty good, so I am happy with this and I guess final observations is uh, this color trio really works quite well together, similar to the secondary color mix that, I, um, that I've done as well, the review on the secondary color mix by Daniel Smith. So I may have already posted that video by now, if you haven't, you can have a look at it as well, but it's a... Yeah, I'm really impressed with these two sets. I'll definitely be using them. They have obviously thought through the color choices very well to make sure that they match up and they don't cause too much interference. I find it's so much easier to balance the colors in your painting as well when you've only got three. If, you've, if you're working with watercolors, you know that so many variables that it's often easier to reduce down those variables until you get a bit more experience and you can handle the variety of colors, but you know, as a first time beginner painting, it can be very intimidating if you're dealing with a palette of 20 colors and you mix them all and they'll turn into mud. So yeah, I tend to choose single pigment colors. So these are single pigment colors, meaning that they are less likely to turn to mud when you mix them with each other, which is why we get a lot of these nice sort of combinations and I, one thing I really liked was the granulation, the, the uh, mixing of the ultramarine either with the red or with the, with the yellow to create these little effects here and it really adds interest and texture, it makes it look like there's a bit more detail in there actually when there, there actually isn't and uh, yeah, I love it. Anyway, if you want to know any more just comment and let me know. If you like this video, check out the playlist on the right. I release new tutorials and art supply reviews each week to help you progress faster in your watercolour journey.